Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling, here to welcome you to the Total Health Channel. <clears throat> Thank you for being with us from time to time. Let's ask God's blessing on our time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for life in the last days again, and uh, please help us uh, see things as you intend through your Holy Spirit. We ask uh, that we might be uh, united. You prayed uh, in John 17 that we would be one, and uh, help us to see things from your perspective. Ask uh, that you'll do exceeding abundantly for Christ's sake. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Well, uh, many of you missed the call-in on Sabbath that uh, some people enjoyed, but uh, one brother said he, I talk too fast, <laughs> and he had to write it down or uh, replay it and so on. So I'll try to talk slower. I guess my uh, uh, perspective has been that I don't want to be boring. Sometimes you hear people talking so slow, and you have to uh, wait uh, so long to get the kernel of what they're saying. But I will try to uh, um, do this a little slower so that you can uh, don't have to replay it. <laughs> um, the topic today is about uh, Chuck Missler's uh, Sabbath versus Sunday, uh, answering his objections or looking at it. Chuck Missler is a, a, a physicist, uh, a scientist, uh, a great intellect, and really quite fair in his effort, uh, I think, to look at the S Sabbath versus Sunday issue. And I'm told by someone on the, on the call that he, his last book, uh, last chapter, he was keeping the Sabbath, okay, uh, uh, Friday evening to Sabbath evening. Uh, that's, that's quite a statement. I, I don't have the book to verify that, but I would like to uh, share perspectives on some of his struggles to get there because uh, so the water is a little bit muddy in certain areas, especially with translators in the New Testament, King James, uh, that uh, somehow... Um, emphasize things that don't help. Uh, and so just want to look at the broad picture. Missler was uh, straight on the creation being a big point at the beginning uh, with uh, God made the world in six literal days and rested the seventh day. Does not mention the word Sabbath there, but Missler uh, gathers that the law, moral laws, were in effect uh, from Eden. And uh, the you know, it mentions the idea that uh, a lamb was used for a sacrifice. Well, that was later in Moses' time, you know, the lamb. But uh, obviously they knew something sooner than that. And uh, it says in, and Missler didn't mention this, but in Genesis 26, verse 5, Abraham obeyed my uh, commandments, kept my statutes, my judgments, and so on. Uh, so the, the laws were there. Uh, they, it wasn't codified, as Missler said, until uh, Exodus time when uh, Israel became a kingdom, but it was uh, in existence. Uh, otherwise, Missler used the example of the, the flood with Noah. He, he took the uh, uh, clean and unclean animals. Well, how did he know which were clean and which were unclean? You know? <laughs> so God, God uh, puts uh, here a little, there a little. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 2, it says uh, that it's the uh, glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out. So some of it is concealed. We don't see it obvious. There are a lot of people think, oh, that was a Jewish law. Well, uh, the Bible happens to be a Jewish book. It was written by Jews, for Jews, and to Jews, with the only exception being uh, Luke, a, a, a Gentile convert. But... Uh, the, the whole the rest of the Bible is, is about a Jewish nation, and Christ uh, told them in the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. So he wanted them to be. He wanted them to be uh, great and be uh, honored through their exaltation. And when they failed to honor him, he could not honor them. You know, uh, And he had to take away some of their blessings, and they, they lost it all, basically. So, uh, sad situation for the commentary on organized religion, starting with Jews, and now the Gentile uh, denominations, which uh, don't get it either. But uh, from, from history, through, through prophecy, we see that, that the little horn power in Daniel 7 was to think to change times and laws. That little horn grew out of the fourth beast, which was the Roman Empire. So the Holy Roman Empire and the papacy grew out, and it was that little horn that spoke great words against the Most High. Words of blasphemy. Lord God the Pope is an a, a blasphemous title. Uh, the Pope is as phony as a $3 bill. 
you know, as far as his ability to be God or Lord, and um, uh, that yet they change the day when, and with the brashness that they have the authority claimed by some of those councils way back when. Well, Chuck Missler got it straight when he, he said he didn't think that uh, they had that kind of authority or were doing it right because the letters we have in the Bible from the first seven churches are not that glorious. They had problems. And to think that they could have changed it, and Chuck Missler looked at the New Testament evidence and could not see. He said, well, uh, he quoted um, Mark 2, verse 27, 28. The, the, the Sabbath was made for man, and the, uh, Christ is Lord of the Sabbath. Well, if he's Lord of the Sabbath, uh, he had to sign off on it being changed. But, uh, but there's no evidence that he changed it. And Missler mentioned the two other places outside of the resurrection. In the book of Acts, it mentions the first day of the week uh, only once, and uh, it was in Acts 20, verse 7 when Paul was preaching till midnight and was going to leave the next day, nothing said about, well, let us make this the holy day. And again, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, uh, it sounded good about uh, the uh, first day until you get to the next verse, which says we don't want any gatherings uh, 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 lay by in store on the first day because we don't want any gatherings when we come. Well, uh, it, nothing again about sacredness of Sunday. But, I contrast, uh, Missler misses several points in the New Testament. He mentions the Jerusalem Council and did not uphold the Sabbath. Well, it didn't uphold the Sunday either, okay? Uh, it mentions uh, 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 things of strangled or offered to idols and uh, fornication. Why? In verse 21, it says it clearly, because Moses has uh, in every city them that preach him uh, ever in the synagogues every Sabbath. It mentions the word every Sabbath. If it's every Sabbath, in contrast to Paul's leaving on a Sunday one time, uh, there's no evidence at all, period. And Paul himself uh, worshipped and uh, uh, met every Sabbath, it says. Now, this is uh, Acts 17, verse 4, I believe it is, uh, when he went from Athens to uh, Corinth, etc. Reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. So, uh, uh, Nine references to Sabbaths, three of them every Sabbath in the book of Acts, and nothing about Sunday, first day, except the two I mentioned. And uh, so that, and, and Missler also uh, understood John's reference in the Spirit on the Lord's Day as not necessarily a reference to Sunday. He felt, and I do agree, that it's, it's, he was in the Spirit on the day of the Lord, the end time period. He was shown that. Uh, from, uh, that's the book of Revelation and how it begins and, and ends. So uh, nothing to say for Sunday, basically. And uh, also a big point for Missler was uh, Isaiah 66. It's about the next to the last verse. That in heaven, from one new moon to another and one Sabbath day to another, shall all flesh come before me. Well, if we're going to, you know, if it was at the beginning and it's going to be at the end in heaven, uh, what happened to it? It was the little horn that sought to change times and laws. The papacy, the mother abominations in Revelation 17, verse 5. So uh, uh, somehow uh, this world is going to uh, be going in the direction of a new world order and want the Pope to be in charge when uh, the, it's as phony and as uh, immoral as the pedophilia that you read about in the morning newspapers or news media. And one last uh, thought on that is uh, from Isaiah 58, around verse 12, 13, 14. We are supposed to be uh, uh, the repairers of the breach, a breach in the Word of God. If we're supposed to repair the breach, we should be uh, standing for what they tried to get rid of. And by the way, that includes the annual Sabbaths as well, because uh, the text, and I, I, I didn't really mention this, I, I mentioned Acts, but uh, Galatians 4.10, Paul was afraid of the Galatians. You, you observe uh, weeks and months and days and years and so on. The, the word for observed was to the minutest detail. They were hair splitters because they were trying to earn their salvation by keep the works of the law. You can't do that, but that doesn't mean that the, the law is bad. The law in Galatians is really the oral Torah that he was so much against, where Jews today, rabbis, uh, honor uh, the majority of the rabbis if, if 
it, one illustration was that if you had a thousand prophets of the stature of Elijah and a thousand and one uh, other rabbis uh, taking an opposite position, you should incline to the majority. That's, that's the Talmud, okay? And that's crazy. But uh, that's what the law was uh, that Paul was writing against in Galatians. It was not against the written Torah of Moses. It's a lot of confusion on that point. But anyway, if you understand that, it helps to see it. And finally, uh, the big, big issue is Colossians 2, verse 16 and 17, where translators added a word and changed the meaning. It is, uh, don't let anybody judge you for the keeping of these uh, holy days, new moon, Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come. Uh, and this gives you the idea those are only shadows, but the body is of Christ. Well, the word is was added. It's italicized in the King James. And if, uh, if you leave out that word is, you could say that don't let anybody judge how you keep them. The body of Christ can decide. The local church can say, well, we're going to meet at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. We're going to have a meal or, or we're going to just have the communion service, uh, whatever. Uh, let them decide. Well, instead, we have a, a, a thing that is trying to make uh, those Sabbaths of none effect uh, and even the, the statement about uh, the holy days being shadows of things to come, uh, we don't get it. We think it was were. They were shadows when well, they were nailed to the cross. That's what most people think. But Paul said are. They are shadows of things to come. They were not nailed to the cross. Okay. So uh, annual Sabbath as well and uh, the calendar need calendar reform. And Laodicea is blind and that includes uh, Adventism as well as evangelicals on the holy days. So uh, thank you for considering this. God bless you, and uh, please share it with others, and we'll see you again at the top.